And this brings us to a few more of Marx's very important contributions to the field of conflict theory. Those ideas of alienation, false consciousness, and class consciousness. It's probably no surprise to you by now that Marx considered modern society, capitalism, industrialism, urbanization, all to be conflict-laden. That is to say, he considered these aspects of modern society to be problematic for most people. He saw society in terms of two classes. He also saw society in terms of class being the most important attribute or aspect which determined your place in the overall structure of society. And so he came up with these ideas of alienation, false consciousness, and class consciousness to help people understand that they might not necessarily have an accurate understanding of where they actually fit with regard to the other class, the capitalist class, the people who owned the means of production. And so he was speaking here to the workers of society. And he talked about this idea of alienation with regard to the ideology of a particular society, and in particular, the ideology of capitalism. And he said that the ideology of capitalism helps those who already have power to maintain their power. And we can think about that in terms of contemporary American society. Marx said that oftentimes people believe things about society that simply aren't necessarily valid, that wouldn't be upheld by research should we choose to investigate them. And oftentimes these things we believe cause us to have misperceptions about society. So in the U.S. what happens is this ideology that we have that, for example, the strong survive, you get what you deserve, as long as you work hard you will succeed. These sorts of ideas, this ideology that we have, help those in power to maintain their power over less fortunate individuals and groups. So the nature of a class society, which is what we are today, fosters the concept of alienation. So when Marx starts talking about alienation, he really is talking from a philosophical standpoint. And he talks about how this contemporary type of society separates us from living the way that we would normally live. It separates us from our human nature, the essence of who we are. And he says that this uh, is a consequence of living in a society that has social classes. And so, while this is a result of a socially stratified society, he says that you become alienated from all of humanity just by the very structure in which you live. And now again, it serves us well to understand what society was like when Marx was alive. People were working in factories, their jobs were monotonous and routine, they were working extraordinary hours, seven days a week with no break, and probably making a very little part of some thing and never really seeing the end product. Contemporarily, we can think about this as the worker who works in an auto plant. He might put, or she might put, one part of that car together, never really seeing the end result, never seeing the car roll off the production line. And so he said that this type of work alienates us from the very essence of who we are. This alienation fosters divisions of labor in society and encourages relationships based on wealth or the lack thereof. And what ends up happening to us when we have this type of alienation is we start to feel separated from the meaning of our lives. We start to feel like it's just time to make the donuts, day in and day out, going to work and coming home, and feeling like really that that's all there is to existence. And so Marx felt that this concept of alienation was an extremely important concept for people to understand. And along with the concept of alienation come two more concepts, false consciousness and class consciousness.
Marx asserted that in a modern society, in an industrialized society, in an urban setting, we lived in a state of false consciousness. And this was really uh, not truly understanding where you fit into the structure. And if you don't understand to Marx, you would be more likely to allow the status quo to exist, even when not in your best interest. What he asserted was, if we live in a state of false consciousness, we allow an unjust society to exist. And so he asserted that this was a very dangerous place for us to exist. It's possible in contemporary American society that we have large numbers of people who live in this area of false consciousness, which encourages alienation to exist in a society. Perhaps many of us who have jobs and have a roof over our head and can put food on the table every single night think that we're in a much better place in the strata of society than we actually are. And research would suggest that what I just said is actually true. When asked, most people estimate that where they are is better than where they actually are are within the structure of society. Marx said that we needed to get out from under the veil of false consciousness. We needed to lift the mask away from our faces and to really be able to understand where we actually fit. And that would be, in Marx's words, developing a class consciousness. For Marx, class consciousness would force us to wake up. It would force us to understand where we were, why we fit there, and exactly what the implications of that are. He also would assert that if most of us developed a true class consciousness, that we would want to advocate for change in the structure of society. And this is where, for a conflict theorist, social movements happen. This is when finally people start to snap out of it, and they start to band together, and they start to realize that as groups, they can impact the structure. They can make social change happen. The women's movement, the civil rights movement, contemporarily the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning movement, all three of these are prime examples of class consciousness happening. The Occupy Wall Street, as much as some people think that it's not a good thing, is another example of class consciousness in action. All right, I hope this helps. Take care. We'll talk again soon.